Okay, we're going to demonstrate some of the features of ScanMaster Viewer. This is the same software as the full version, but without the USB dongle, it reverts to the viewer mode. And interestingly, this version can also be used in the field to acquire data with the GLS laser scanner. So when you load in a project, the first thing is 3D navigation of the point cloud in this model space. To rotate the model, you hold down the left mouse button and keeping it hold, held down, just move the mouse around. To zoom in is the center scroll wheel of the mouse. And to pan left and right, we use the right mouse button. There's also some predefined views which are familiar to anyone from a CAD environment. These are up here. We've got a top view. Zoom in on that. And what we can see is it's got an element of perspective to it and that's because of the projection that's chosen by default. This icon here gives us the choice of either parallel or perspective projection. If I switch to parallel we now have a perfect plan view of the building. Likewise, we've got zoom left. Right. Front and back. So those are ways of getting different elevation views from your point cloud. Next, the colour of the points. At the moment, we're looking at the intensity of the points, and we can change this by via this icon here, data colour, and we can colour the points by elevation, by image. So here they are coloured by the RGB values derived from the onboard camera of the scanner. And we can also colour by layer if we want to put our scans from different scan positions onto different layers. A couple more points on viewing the point cloud. These two buttons here can be used to increase and decrease the point size. So we can effectively fill in the gaps between points by making them a little bit bigger. And this button here can be used to control the performance of the display settings affecting the point cloud. So if we had a very big cloud which was performing slowly on our computer, we could opt for faster performance, which would give an improvement in the viewing properties. At the moment, we're viewing the point cloud in what's called the, um, the cube view. If we go to this button called navigation, we can switch to sphere. Sphere is effectively a spherical projection of the data set from the point of view of where the instrument was set up. And there's one thing we can do in this view. We can also view the images that were acquired using the camera on the laser scanner. And we can also turn off the points and just view the images. Next, we're going to look at clipping and slicing of our point cloud. Clipping out relevant parts of a point cloud is a useful way of isolating only the points that we want to work with for a given task. So what we're going to aim to do is isolate this doorway here and then measure, do some measurements on it. This button here is the selection mode tool and it has two options, either data or option or objects. Data is actually the, the actual laser scan points and objects are things like polylines and points. So we keep that on data and then we've got three selection tools here. We've got point selection, which as it suggests is just a single point, rectangular selection or polygonal selection. So the way I normally do this is select the area of interest. So we'll just draw a polyline around the door. 
and then when we finished right click and we see that the selected points are displayed as purple now because the doorway is what I'm interested in I'm going to use this button here to invert the selection I can also do that via select invert and now everything is selected apart from my doorway and what I do now is choose this option this button is called hide data and this will temporarily turn off all those points that are selected and I'm left with just my door if I rotate it sideways I can see some points that have gone into the building and also some points and some noise of people outside the building so I'm going to do that selection process again so we'll choose the rectangular selection this time draw a rectangle around my door those points are selected now invert the selection and hide the points so I'm now left with just my doorway and another useful tool at this point is the focus tool and this will set the center of 3d rotation about a given point that's what this button here is set target so if I click that and then there's a little tip down here on the bottom left it says control and left click to set the target so I'm going to control and left click on the center of the door and now we can see that the, the point cloud rotates about that central point. Now to measure the distance, it's very easy. We go to create distance. And again, referring to this little prompt at the bottom left, it says control left click for the first point and control right click to stop. So I will put my first point here, so control left click, and then the same again here, control left click. And ScanMaster pops up this box which has the information about that dimension displayed. So there's the line going from left to right on the doorway, and we can see displayed here the horizontal and slope distances. Next we'll look at measurement of angles on our point cloud. I'll switch to intensity. And what we'll do is measure this angle here on this bit of door detail. So just as we did with distances, we go create angle. And again, we've got control left click so we'll start there those are my first two points and then my third point and again ScanMaster pops up this box with the angle statistics and we've got the azimuth slope and zenith of that angle Okay, we measured a distance and an angle and what we can see on the left hand side is we now have two entities in this tree we've got angle one and distance one and we can turn these on and off like that and if we want to see the statistics for that distance again we can just right click and go to properties and we see that results box pop up again Another thing we can do is right click on any of these attributes and go to table and we can see those results in a slightly different form and uh, we can also copy and paste numbers out of this table which is quite interesting. The next thing we're going to look at is taking cross-sectional slices through the point cloud. So we'll stick with this isolated part of the building in terms of the doorway and we've got these three icons here which are sliced in the X, Y and Z axes and they can also be approached via data slice and there they are again so we'll choose the Z axis and click enabled 
and then by moving these two boxes we can define our slice so we can uh, use the upper and lower slider to control the width of the slice so this slice is just over 0 0.1 meters in height and if I click the locked button I can now move this slice up and down through the feature. So if we go back to top view and then zoom in on the doorway we can see our cross section through the recess and the door itself on the point cloud. So now if I close that box we've still got my slice of the point cloud and to get my points back I just untick enabled and here's my full point cloud again right the last thing we're going to look at on this short tour of ScanMaster Viewer is creation of layers and then putting points on those layers at the moment we've still got our doorway as an isolated part of the point cloud if we want to re-enable the full point cloud if I turn off the various scans that I was looking at and then turn them back on we see that the full building loads up this icon here is for creating a layer and this icon is the layer table where we can control all the layer attributes. If I click that, we can see these layers that we've got in our project. And if I create a new layer, we'll see it appear down there. And I can type here to give it a name. I can choose a color and I can control things like the line type and line width as well. So just as in many CAD applications, if I select that layer I created as the current one and I now go create point, I can isolate a part of the cloud and insert that point. So if I wanted to put a point, for example, on the corner of this window, just rotate it so that we can see what we're looking at and we're being careful here not to have any points displayed behind the window which might be selected by accident and this is the reason why ScanMaster requires you to press the control key when inserting either the start or the end of a measurement or inserting a point because without the control key pressed we have the ability to navigate the point cloud in 3D so now you can see down in the left there it says control left click to draw a point and there's my first point and I can just keep doing this inserting points on the point cloud now this is pretty analogous to being in the field with a reflectorless total station picking up features from the building so I've just inserted eight points there and if I expand this primitives part of the tree you can see those points displayed in order. Now if I want to see the 3D coordinates of those points I just right click and tabulate those results and that's what we can see here. We've got the point name, the XYZ coordinate and the layer that they live on. I can also enter a description if I wish and if I want to export these I can just highlight them and uh, cop press Control C to copy them and then paste them into a text editor for use elsewhere. 